Welcome back to episode 2 of I Tear Apart a Typewriter for Snow Reason. Uh, let's go. 3, 2, 1. So, we're gonna work on this thing today. Got some new instructions. Got some new things to try. Gonna see how that goes. Uh, time for the close-up. So now we're in close to the machine. You can see uh, the top of this... The top of the carrier. Uh, and today we're gonna be focusing on the carrier tray. Uh, which, as I found out, is incredibly easy to remove, uh, especially compared to, you know, how it looks. Um, there's actually just two screws. I can get my pointer here. Uh, there's this one, which contains this little detenting thing. It, it, it's important on it in its own right. And there's this one, which just holds the thing down. And before I go any further, it's important to note that this is a, this is a process of no return. Once you get started, you got to take it off, you got to make sure everything is adjusted, and then you put it back down. You can't just pick it up and put it down because uh, it's timed, it's, it's synced up with other parts. So I'm going to go ahead, tear this off. Just going to be left-handed for a second so you can see what I'm doing. trying to edit these videos as little as possible so people can understand the amount of time that goes into this. There's very little time skipping. I'd like to thank uh, Lucas. I'm not sure what his last name is, uh, but he's on the uh, golf ball typewriter forums or mailing list or whatever it is, and he uploaded the complete set, set of manuals for the uh, 50, 60, 75, 85, 95 series that allowed me to find these screws. I probably would have unscrewed a lot of wrong things if he hadn't. So actually, once you got that, you just give it a little bit of a wiggle, and it pops out. Alright, so now we're inside. Uh, I've taken the, the top cover off already, and you can see how absolutely disgusting this stuff is. There's like black brown grease all over it and to be fair it's not the worst grease at least on this uh this little worm gear here that's not bad it's gross but there's a chance that it looked like that to begin with so i'm not too worried about that i will clean that off uh but the problem is i've taken this off already oh i forgot to mention um this thing uh there's a little it's a pwm cable that controls the lights for the carrier, make sure you unplug that before you take it off. I, I forgot about that. Um, okay, so we got this thing. This is the problem child here. Uh, this is a kind of detenting mechanism. It's supposed to hold that uh, that spur that I showed in the last episode. Um, it's supposed to hold it in place when you're going backwards, I believe, uh, to keep it from spinning and cranking your ribbon when you when you're deleting. Uh, it's stuck. It's basically glued to the wall here by just nasty old grease. So I'm going to clean that up. Um, going to see if that changes the function. Every time I put it back together, I have to make sure everything's in the right position. So uh, I'll show you how to do that when I try to put it back together, if it works. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to go to the manual and read very carefully. So uh, in an effort to save on battery... I think I'm going to have to cut this out once I start cleaning, but you'll get the idea. This isn't very complicated. I got my trusty wipes again. One of these days I'll just bring in Q-tips. It's interesting in this machine, a lot of the things are actually, uh, actually machined metal. Like, some of it you can see that it was very mass-produced, but other parts are, uh, they look like someone actually took a hand drill to fix them or modify them. Like, they realized something was wrong with it as it was rolling off the line. And use the old, uh piece of cloth on a pair of tweezers trick here. That's an old one, right? So 
So I'll be back to you when this is all clean. So I went in and I cleaned out the cams and gears in here, uh, which you'll see now. This is much shinier, there's no more grime in the teeth of this gear, at least on the visible side. It's almost impossible to clean the other side without taking the whole thing out, or using a half-step tool, which I don't have. Um, this is no longer clogged with brown grease, no more grease on here, no more grease on here, basically no grease anywhere. There's a little bit back in the corner here that is basically solid, but it's not on a, it's not on a part that has to move smoothly, so it's alright. Um, and I did that just by taking a cloth and uh, I would hold it down on here and start, start the thing up. It's kind of like polishing something on a lathe. Uh, you just kind of run it and as it turns under the, uh, under the cloth it cleans it. So, actually, I'm still getting grime off here. When I was done with that, I coated it in 3-in-1 and then did the same thing to dissolve it even more, dissolve anything that was left over and do it again. And you can probably barely see it, but um, right in here, this is the reason you need to use a lint-free cloth, unlike me. Uh, there's a lot of lint now stuck to the shaft. Luckily it's in a place that doesn't matter. I think I'm going to have to find some better cloths to change over to uh, next time I do this. But now I'm going to do the same process on the cover plate. Uh, which is that thing I took off the first in the first clip, um, and when that's all clean, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper because I think there's a, a more specific reason that this thing is jamming up. Although this, this actually this is the uh, source of the problem, and it looks like it's all all working now. So, uh, check back in a minute. Here's the, uh, carrier cover. Um, right now, top's pretty clean. Again, we got all this fluff. I'm gonna have to go back through with, like, a, like, a screen cleaner or something and just, like, wipe that down, because these, uh, these rags leave way too much lint. Um, if I can flip this over without ruining focus, you'll see that this part was pretty easy. I, I used the tweezers with the with the uh, cloth wrapped around them a couple of times to get into the, to the tight places. I still have to clean the tops of these rods, these, these little cam followers right here. Maybe a little bit of this big cam. Um, getting the crank mechanism, I, I was able to go a little deeper into that because I had a new angle. But other than that, it's mostly stuff you can see from the top. Now, without ruining the focus here, there you go. Uh, here's the bottom, and the worst offenders here, we've got, uh, we've got this follower, this follower back here, which is, uh, part of the lifter, also, um, got some crap down here, and we've got this whole system, which is a gear and a cam and another cam, and a lot of grease and it's just caked and dry, and it's not doing much of anything. I don't think this solves my problem yet, though, because uh, even having this totally clean, I mean, it turns already, as you can see. So it twists just fine, which means that there's something wrong deeper down. And I may have solved that by ungreasing that little lever, uh, but I can't be sure. So I want to try everything before I put it back in, because it takes a lot of adjustment to put it in correctly. Um, so I'm going to clean this up and then come on back to you. Look, I'm brushing my teeth! So joking aside, I am actually using a toothbrush to clean this thing. Um, I've just got a cup full of water and dish soap. It's way too foamy. I'm uh, going to have to work that out, but... Um, I'm just... It's okay now, because I don't have to worry about dripping water on any electronics, because there are no electronics in this thing, so... I can cut through the grease with dish soap dry it off very thoroughly, and then put uh, oil in to drive off any leftover water. So I'm going to keep doing this. This thing will probably be soaked by the time I'm done. I'm going to wash it down, re-grease it, see what happens. A warning here.
um, that I just realized. Uh, when you do wash this down, be sure that you don't do it with this uh, little electronic assembly connected. To, do, to detach it, you just use this little tab. And I'm touching it with my wet hands, which is already a bad idea, but use a little tab on the side, it falls out. I'll put it off to the side so it doesn't get wet any more than it already did. Um, I mean, it's not powered, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's just one resistor and a couple of LEDs, but best to play it safe. So now you can see this thing is very clean, uh, especially looking at the gear, which was my primary concern. Um, I wanted to get all that old grease off so I can use the uh, the white lithium grease to replace it. Um, where's my pointer? What else do we work on? Uh, this there's I'm worried about water pooling in here. Uh, it's not a big deal to have water in this after washing it off, um, because oil will drive off the water. But, you cannot under any circumstances have soapy water in it. Um, because those of you who have been through high school chemistry class will know that soap is a surfactant and it allows water and oil to bond. Well, to mix. So, if we left soap on, on this in any way, uh, it could mix with oil and water and hold the water in when we're trying to push it out with the oil. Uh, I don't think that's an issue. I washed this down very thoroughly. A lot of black stuff and metal shavings came out of it, so I think we're good. Um, I Honestly, even if you did have a little bit of soap on it and you put everything in, I don't think a little bit of water is going to kill you. It's It would probably end up being less water than is in like the atmosphere. So... Uh, that's just me being neurotic, but I am going to put a little bit of grease on the key spots here. Not on the gear yet, because I still have to, uh, still have to dig in deeper. I won't put that grease on until we're actually reassembling. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to figure out what's happening next, and then I'll come back. So before my battery dies, um, just wanted to show off my handiwork here. I used this paintbrush as I was before. Um, some white lithium grease, and I mean, I, I just put it everywhere. I, I wanted to seal everything. I don't want to have any any doubt in my mind that this thing is fully lubricated. So uh, I got this thing really good. This had a lot of grease on it before. Um, the the tape mechanism over here. Uh, these joints, because they're for the the ejection mechanism, which is finicky. You can see it's actually spraying out some black grease there, which I don't like at all. Um, gonna have to figure out where that's coming from. Oh, I know where it's coming from. I also put 3-in-1 in, in all the very tight gaps, uh, some of which already had lithium grease in them. Uh, they don't seem like they react badly with each other. They, the oil will just dissolve the grease um, just a little bit, so it, it will get in the cracks that the grease doesn't and then it'll kind of run off if there's too much. So, you see this thing, this thing is totally whited out and I want to be absolutely sure that it has enough grease. Um, it was caked before, so uh, this should be, this should at least match it. Lithium grease is pretty good, as I understand. Um, we'll see. Other than that, we got some tiny joints with grease in them right here and here. Um, got some oil on this joint in here. Tried to put lithium grease at the end of a lot of the springs, uh, like it was before. Um, there's oil only on this thing. And I tried to reduce the friction over here. Uh, by putting oil between it and the wall, but it didn't really help. Um, most of the friction on the ejection mechanism comes from this. There's just a big scratchy mess over here that I'm still working on, so... That's it. Uh, that's about all I'm gonna get to on this uh, battery, so... I'll have to recharge and come back. So now, holding this thing as awkwardly as humanly possible, uh, I'm going to show you how to reassemble this mechanic, and I'm I'm going to admit I cheated a little. I did put it back together. It works. Um, 
I took it apart for this demo. It's not really a diary at this point, is it? Um, so these things are called alignment holes. And you can go by the holes or you can go by this little uh, follower here. But um, what you need to do is twist this whole cam and gear system so that everything lines up. All right, so now you can see uh, we've got our little follower up here right on top of the point. One of these spurs, that's good. The hole is visible through the uh, alignment hole. You can stick something in there, that's, that's the idea. I'm actually gonna adjust it a little bit more. Oop, and I lost it. There's no, you can go backwards on this. There's no uh, like locking mechanism. And now we're gonna put it in Twisted slightly counterclockwise as per the manual. And I'm going to set it in here. And again, you've just got two holes that you're looking at. There's one on the right side, should line up. One on the left side, also lines up. Uh, you put the right side in first, because uh, the other one is a slot. For non engineers, uh, that is a standard. Anytime you see a pair of screws, one will usually, or that are both in the same part, one will usually have a tight tolerance hole and the other will have a wider slot um, to account for any little manufacturing variances. So this is our hole, or the pin, and the other is a slot. And I don't know why I'm using a pocket knife to do this, I just couldn't find a a good flat head in the immediate area. So I'm going to leave that a little bit loose. I'm going to lay down our little uh, one-way lock. I guess it's kind of a clutch. And I'm going to screw that in on top. And you'll see when I pick my fingers up, the, the follower on top is still where it was supposed to be. Still on the tip. Because now it's locked into the, the worm gear behind it. You might have to wiggle, use your thumb to push this back and forth until the screw falls into the hole. But uh, you should not have to fight it. These are very easy screws. Very gentle. All the way down. Right until they hit the bottom, and then you got to push a little. So that one's locked in. I'm going to finish this one off. That one's a very good feel to it. Same with this one. So now they're both tightened down. Power the thing up. And it's spinning. Um, and that's that was our original problem. So I'm not sure what fixed it, whether it was moving that, uh, that little head around um, to unlock it, and or ungreasing that, or just like poking around on the inside, or maybe it was greasing the whole thing up, but it works now. Um, I'm going to put the type head back on it, and we're going to see if I can actually get it to lift the ribbon into position. Um, so, uh, quick magic cut to that. Okay, uh, so this is kind of a moment of truth, because I did not test this um, on paper yet. I, I only tested the mechanism. I saw it was rotating, I saw the uh, the pole was moving, the, moving what would have been the ribbon if it were in there, but there was no ribbon. So, uh, you're seeing this for the first time I am. I'm gonna see if it lifts it. I will be, uh, very unhappy if this doesn't move. And we're still erasing. Much more gently, I might add. Yeah, we still got a problem here, but, um... We made a little bit of progress. We got that cam rotating, so... And it is still rotating. So I guess, uh... In fact, we're actually, um... We're actually cranking ribbon here, so... The ribbon's good. I think we're just, uh, lifting too high still. That's very strange, honestly. A uh, quick little errata here. Um, 
it actually was the other alignment hole that you need to line it up with. So uh, when you're twisting that big plastic cam into place, um, you want, if you imagine the curve here, you want that roller on top to sit nicely in the, in the curve. You don't want it on the point. And there are only two options. You either have it on that point or you don't. It, between the two holes, so go for the one where you don't. Go for the one where it's resting easily. Um, because now it works. Uh, well, if you can call this working. I'll type test. Test. Uh, those letters are working pretty well. The keyboard is still screwy. Um, and I think the whole mechanism still needs lube, because certain letters. P is fine. O is fine. K and L are problematic. K tends to type I. K tends to type I before it types K. Um, it needs height adjustment because it's typing off the top of the ribbon still. Uh, it's not going high enough now that it's actually moving up. So, or now that, now that I stopped it from moving up all the way, it's not moving up high enough. So, you'll see, like, the tops of K's get cut off. Tops of any tall letter has a chance to get cut off, like a 1 in 3 chance. Um, I'm going to type these numbers out really quickly. Okay, so next day update. Um, everything's working a little bit better now. I went to sleep, I got back up, uh, reconsidered what was going on. Um, it's, it's typing now, as you can see, I got a lot of letters on the paper. Uh, I'm using V's and underscores here because I was adjusting the ribbon. I'll show you how to do that soon. Um, what I found out was that one of the things that I originally suspected but ignored, uh, the uh, it's the thing that it's a, a cam follower and a switch and a solenoid that all control uh, whether or not you're backspacing, which controls whether it lifts all the way to corrective tape height or if it goes to ribbon. Um, and it was stuck in corrective tape again. So I greased that off really good, I'll show you where that is. And then I had to adjust the height of the ribbon, uh, which was, every third character was typing right off the top. As you, you'll, I'll show you a close-up in here, but you can see uh, it's only catching the bottom of some of these letters. Um, V's and underscores are your ideal test characters. V's because they're very tall, uh, and they take up a lot of space, but they're not, um, they're not super wide like an M. And uh, underscores to match the bottom. Now, I hope you can see how beautifully greasy this all is. Um, I worked very hard on it, and I want you to appreciate my work, whoever you are. Um, so what you're looking at here, what the camera's focused on, is this follower. Um, it acts as a toggle uh, between backspacing and forward spacing, or not... It acts as a toggle between a full ribbon lift and partial ribbon lift, basically. I, it's hard to describe. It interacts with the uh, the top plate and all the stuff attached to that. But you see, it goes up and down. Um, it would do that normally, uh, driven by this cam. And there's this little thing, powered by a solenoid. Uh, and when it's pushed out, um, like I just did, like this, it um it releases this cam follower and allows it to drop down. So if I turn it on. Let it go back and forth for a second here. I'm going to type a couple of letters. It's supposed to stay down, which it is. Oh, sorry, no, it's supposed to pop up when you type. I keep forgetting the, the way it's supposed to go. So yeah, it needs to be up when you're typing positive letters. So, unless you're deleting like that, it should be, it should be up. Um, and it has a habit of sticking down, and I'm not sure if that's because it's got a weak solenoid, or it needs to be greased more, or what. Um, but largely, it's it's where it is when it's supposed to be there. Um, I think maybe with some time for the grease to work in, we'd, we'd see an improvement. Um, and that's about it. The spring is in a weird place. You see the, the, the end of the spring is just kind of hanging out this little hole here. I think that might have something to do with it. Um, but I can't find a better place for that spring. So we'll see. Alright, so besides breaking that Bristol screw, um, which you can see right here, 
Uh, again, do not use hex wrenches in a Bristol screw. They will break it. I'm lucky with this one because it can still be adjusted uh, with just some wrenches, but yeah, it's, it's a, that's irreplaceable. Um, what you're going to do to adjust the height of your characters on the ribbon is lock onto this nut, and use, you're going to have to find a good socket for this one. You really don't want to use pliers. Uh, you snap onto it, and you're turning right, and only only right. That's that's clockwise. So you twist. Oop! And I just touched it a little. I don't want to do that. Um, let me make sure I didn't adjust it at all. So it's very sensitive. You technically only ever want to turn clockwise uh, as per the manual. I'm not totally sure why that is, but that's the rule. Um, and so you're going to turn that a couple of degrees and then you snap your ribbon in, type out uh, some good big characters like um, VVV capital uh, and then underscore 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 and you gotta make sure that nothing's getting cut off the ribbon. Underscore is the lowest possible character. V is a good big character. You can also use T which is excellent for testing uh, ribbon height and when you're done with that, when it's all lined up uh, you should be good. There's more to fix on this machine, but for now the uh, the ribbon assembly is all working. It's all freshly greased, so I'm happy with that. And I guess tomorrow the goal will be to get it typing more letters correctly. Uh, it has some issues with tilt and rotate operations still. Maybe you have to go in there and grease up the solenoids and pins. So that'll be tomorrow's job. See you next time.